Hello! This video is going to explain the boyle mohr horsball algorithm for string matching. String matching is a problem in which we want to find all the occurrences of one string P in a larger string T. It is important to find an algorithm with good space and time complexities as there are so many applications for string matching, such as web searches, searches within applications, as well as DNA matching and network intrusion detection systems. Okay. First we just need to go through a quick bit of notation for string matching problems. P will be the pattern we are trying to find and will always have length m. T will have length n and will be the string in which the pattern is being searched for. First character of both P and T is numbered 1 and the last character of each is numbered m and n respectively. To understand the boyle mohr horsball algorithm we will need to put it into perspective with the other string matching algorithms. A naive method works by checking if each possible substring of the correct length is a match. This requires no preprocessing but takes big theta n times m times match. The Nut Morris Pratt algorithm is much cleverer than this and uses a prefix table to save re examining previously matched substrings. This algorithm has preprocessing time of big theta m and matching time of big theta n. The Boilemore horsepower algorithm improves on nut noise pratt over large alphabets. The central idea is to build a table which contains the number corresponding to each letter's rightmost occurrence in the pattern. The last character of the pattern isn't taken into account when building this table, as the character in the text string that the last character of the pattern is aligned to determines the amount of shift. Now we're going to go through some examples of shifting the pattern. There are two different cases for shifting the pattern. The first is when a mismatch occurs somewhere other than with the last character of the pattern. You can see an example of this circled in the top example. The rightmost B in the pattern is then found, and the pattern is shifted along so this B matches the B of the text string, which previously lined up with the last character of the pattern. Hopefully it is now clearer why the last character is not included when creating the table of rightmost occurrences. Otherwise, in this example, we wouldn't know where the next B was. The other type of mismatch is when the last character in the pattern doesn't match its corresponding character in T. This case is very similar. The only difference is that we find that the rightmost occurrence of the character which doesn't match the pattern in the text string, in this case C, and then we shift accordingly. This is a version of the actual boyle mohr horsball algorithm. As you can see, the first step is to create the table of rightmost occurrences for each character in the alphabet. After that, the searching begins. The key structure of this algorithm is the two while loops. The outer one loops through all possible positions of the pattern in T, in which the inner loop goes from the rightmost character in the pattern to the left, checking if the characters match. If a match is found, it's reported, otherwise the algorithm continues and updates the guess position of P in T according to the table of rightmost occurrences. OK, so now we're going to run through a full example. The first step is to calculate the table. We do this by minusing the position of the rightmost occurrence of each character from m the length of the pattern, as shown on the previous slide. The value is just m if the character in the alphabet does not appear in the pattern. The computed table is shown in the upper right hand corner. As you can see in this example, a mismatch occurs in the circled column between a in t and b in p. The pattern is then shifted along as according to the table of rightmost occurrences. Now there is a mismatch between D and B, so the pattern P is shifted along 8 places to the right, as indicated by the table entry for D. The algorithm continues, checking whether P is a match, and then shifting P along according to the numbers in the table. This keeps going until a complete match is found for the pattern within T. You can see the match highlighted in red here. The algorithm would then continue iterating through T to find any more matches. The complexity of string matching algorithms are determined by the number of comparisons they perform, as the number of comparisons is linearly related to the runtime. In the worst case, the boyle horsepower algorithm is no better than big O n times m. For instance, consider the trivial example p equals b to the m and t equals b to the n where n is less than or equal to n. Although a match can be found in first n comparisons, the aim of string matching algorithms tends to be to find all the matches. 
Therefore, as there will be n minus m possible matches, each of which will require m comparisons, n times m minus m squared matches will take place, which is big O of n times m. However, the Bollamore Horsfall algorithm is much better over larger alphabets and performs in big O of n time on average, with the best case with big O of n over m. The pre processing stage of the algorithm would take big O of the size of the alphabet plus m. As to create the table, we need to loop through every character in the alphabet and then through every character but the last in the passing P. The algorithm is relatively efficient in memory use. Apart from P and T, it only has to store an array of the same size as the alphabet from the pre-processing stage. I hope you've learned something about the Boyle-Moore horsefly algorithm. Thank you for watching.